Hi, this is Chad with Data Springs, and I just wanted to uh, create a couple short videos that highlight some of the features with the latest interactive user import module for .NET Nuke. Um, the latest module has many enhancements for allowing you to import users based on a SQL query and uh, other enhancements related to .NET Nuke uh, 6.0 specifically, including a new updated interface. Um, so just let's just go ahead and get started though with uh, the basic features. Uh, the module allows you to import users from a CSV text or Excel file um, or choose to import from a SQL query or an existing import definition. Um, you can manage existing import definitions within the interface and within here you can uh, kick off an existing import or delete, uh, delete an import definition, etc. Uh, so with that, we will go ahead and let's just get started with a new import definition from an Excel file, and we will name this uh, Test Demonstration. We'll click Browse, and we'll just load up one of the example files we have. Note that there's a hyperlink right here to load these example files in case you need to download these um, to try out and compare to your own files. Uh, we'll now hit next and what interactive user import will allow you to do is to actually choose uh, between each column that's brought in so we'll select username and we'll map that to username and we'll select password and we'll map this to password and the same with first name and the same with last name um, and we'll do, uh, we'll probably do city and maybe we'll do uh, email. We'll continue to the next step. And the next step is going to allow us to choose um, different types of interactive events you can fire off during a, a user import. Uh, these events are fired off conditionally based on a response. So if you wanted to fire off some events if the user um, was from California, you could fire off uh, different events if the user was from Kansas. Um, the other steps that you are allowed to do are to fire off emails or to execute a SQL statement. Um, so these can be very useful if you wanted to, uh, say, uh, add them to the role Kansas maybe for imports and updates and only if they had the response um, where city and equals uh, let's say Kansas City we would add the event it gets added um, and you know you can set up as many of these events as you would want the steps <coughs> to create these events are very similar to our completion events within dynamic forms and dynamic registration. So we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, as we're working here, there's many, many options that you can enable. And in future videos, we'll highlight some of these. Um, for example, you could generate usernames, and you could have it based on maybe a, a first name, last initial. Um, we can generate the password. So maybe we'll have a password prefix of data springs underscore and then a random uh, maybe like four digit number. Um, you can choose to overwrite existing users and if you want to overwrite or write them uh, choose a profile field that's matching um, uh, and we can update user credential fields as well that includes like username, first name, last name. Um, we can receive an email with a report and we can decide uh, there's other options do we want to enable logging um, do we want to specify a global filter maybe we only want to import um, if there's a specific filter based on the Excel spreadsheet so maybe only when city is equal to Kansas City um, we could use a static file this would allow you to have a file on your server and you could also make it reoccurring. So if you enable these two options every night or every week, depending on the settings of the scheduler, you could import these users um, from a file on the server. 
So we'll go ahead and disable this. Um, you could, this is a new feature in the 3.0 release to execute a SQL query before and after import. Uh, force password change on next sign in and automatically authorize users. So there's several settings we can add. We'll click next. This will show us our sample data. Um, uh, it's going to show us you know, any options we've selected in here, any completion events that we've created in here. And we can choose to automatically start the scheduler. If we choose finish, we are done and the scheduled process will run. Uh, in some of the most recent versions of Interactive User Import, you can now manage the scheduler directly in the module interface. So you no longer have to go to host, schedule, and, and view a history there. Um, this allows you to easily be able to kick off the scheduler, view the logs, um, purge test users, and so forth. So if you have any other questions, please visit us um, at datasprings.com. Uh, for now, we will go ahead and end this short video.